Hello and welcome. This presentation will help you learn basic writing skills and learning these basic writing skills will help you succeed on standardized exams such as the PSAT, ACT, SAT, and so on. Now, let's start with punctuation. Commas. We use commas as separate items in a series. If more than two items are listed in a series, they should be separated by commas. The final comma, the one that precedes the word and, may be omitted. Example. Right. My recipe for fried rice includes eggs, shrimp, salt, soy sauce, and onions. Also write, my recipe for fried rice includes eggs, shrimp, salt, soy sauce and onions. It doesn't matter whether or not there is a comma before the word and. Be watchful for commas placed before the first element of a series or after the last element. Wrong, my recipe for fried rice includes eggs, shrimp, salt, soy sauce and onions. This is wrong because there is a comma after the word includes. Also wrong, egg, shrimp, salt, soy sauce, and onions are the ingredients in my fried rice. This is wrong because there is a comma after the word onions. We use commas to separate two or more adjectives before a noun. Right, I can't believe you sat through that long, boring movie three times in a row. It is incorrect to place a comma after the last adjective in a series. Wrong, this whale is a large, blue, blubbery creature. We use commas to set off parenthetical clauses and phrases. If a phrase or clause is not necessary to the main idea expressed by a sentence, it should be set off by commas. Example, Robert, who never had any formal chef's training, makes excellent mushroom pizza. The main idea here is that Robert makes excellent mushroom pizza. The intervening clause merely serves to further describe Robert, it should therefore be enclosed in commas. We also use commas after introductory phrases. Example, having watered his tulips every day during the drought, Leon was disappointed when his garden was destroyed by aphids. Example, after the dinner party, Gerald and Melinda went to the park. Commas are also used as separate independent clauses. Use a comma before a conjunction that connects two independent clauses. Example, Sean is good at basketball, but he's better at tennis. We now move on to semicolons. Like commas, semicolons can be used as separate independent clauses. As we saw in the previous slide, two related independent clauses that are connected by a conjunction such as and, but, nor, or yet should be punctuated by a comma. If the words and, but, nor, or yet aren't used, the clauses should be separated by a semicolon. Example. Right. Polar bears are an endangered species, there are only 1,000 of them alive today. Also right. Polar bears are an endangered species, and they are unlikely to survive if we don't do something about climate change. Semicolons may also be used between independent clauses connected by words, like therefore, nevertheless, and moreover. Colons. In standard written English, the colon is used only as a means of signaling that what follows is a list, definition, explanation, or restatement of what has gone before. A word or phrase such as like the following, as follows, namely, or this is often used along with the colon to make it clear that a list, summary, or explanation is coming up. Example. Right, this is what I found in his refrigerator, a moldy pizza, a rotten tomato, and an expired carton of milk. Right, your instructions are as follows, read the passage carefully, answer the multiple choice questions, and turn over your answer sheet. The dash. The dash has two uses. 
one is to indicate an abrupt break in thought. Example, the alligator, unlike the crocodile, will usually not attack humans, unless, that is, she feels that her young are in danger. The dash can also be used to set off a parenthetical expression from the rest of the sentence. Example, at 32 Fahrenheit which is zero on the Celsius scale water will freeze. The apostrophe. The apostrophe has two distinct functions. It is used with contracted verb forms to indicate that one or more letters have been eliminated. Example, the boy is an expert at chess. The boy is an expert at chess. Example, the boy has left for the day. The boy has left for the day. The apostrophe is also used to indicate the possessive form of a noun. Example, the boy s face was covered with mosquito bites after a day in the swamp. Now we will move on to grammar. Subject, verb, agreement. The form of a verb must match or agree with its subject in two ways, person and number. Number 1. Agreement of person. When we talk about person, we re-talking about whether the subject and verb of a sentence show that the author is making a statement about himself, first person, the person he is speaking to, second person, or some other person, place, thing, third person. First person subjects, I, we. Example, I am going to Paris. We are going to Vietnam. Second person subject, you. Example, are you sure you weren't the imagining that flying saucer? Third person subjects, he, she, they, it, and names of people, places, and things. Example, he is driving me crazy. Number 2. Agreement in number. When we talk about number, we re-talking about whether the subject and verb show that one thing is being discussed, singular or that more than one thing is being discussed, plural, this hint, subjects and verbs must agree in number. Wrong, the children catches the school bus every morning. Right, the children catch the school bus every morning. Be especially careful of subject-verb agreement when the subject and verb are separated by a long string of words. Wrong, wild animals in jungles all over the world is endangered. Right, wild animals in jungles all over the world are endangered. We now move on to pronouns. A pronoun is a word that is used in place of a noun. The antecedent of a pronoun is the word to which the pronoun refers. Example, Mary was late for work because she forgot to set the alarm. Mary is the antecedent. She is the pronoun. Occasionally, an antecedent will appear in a sentence after the pronoun. Example, because he sneezes so often, Arthur always thinks he might have the flu. He is the pronoun. Arthur is the antecedent. Pronouns and agreement. In clear, grammatical writing, a pronoun must clearly refer to and agree with its antecedent. Number agreement and person agreement of pronouns is tested on standardized exams. Number and person. In first person, the singular pronouns are I, me, my, and mine. The plural pronouns are we, us, our, and ours. In second person, the singular pronouns are you, your, and yours. The plural pronouns are also you, your, and yours. In third person, the singular pronouns are he, him, she, her, it, one, his, her, hers, its, and one's. The plural pronouns are they, them, their, and theirs, this. Number agreement. Pronouns must agree in number with their antecedents. A singular pronoun should stand in for a singular antecedent. A plural pronoun should stand in for a plural antecedent. Here is a typical pronoun error, wrong, the bank turned Harry down when he applied for a loan, because their credit department discovered that he didn't have a job. What does the plural possessive there refer to? The singular noun bank. The singular possessive it's is what we need here. Right, the bank turned Harry down for a loan, because its credit department discovered that he didn't have a job. Person agreement. Pronouns must agree with their antecedents in person too. A first person pronoun should stand in for a first 
person antecedent, and so on. One more thing to remember about which pronoun to use with which antecedent, never use the relative pronoun which to refer to a human being. The pronouns who or whom are used to refer to people, depending on the context, the pronoun that can refer to either things or people. Wrong, the woman which is watching TV is my sister. Right, the woman who is watching TV is my sister. Pronouns in case. A more subtle type of pronoun problem is one in which the pronoun is in the wrong case. Look at the following chart. If the case is in first person. When the subjective is I, the adjective is me. When the subjective is we, the adjective is us. If the case is in second person, when the subjective is you, the adjective is you. If the case is in third person, when the subjective is he, the adjective is him. When the subjective is she, the adjective is her. When the subjective is it, the adjective is it. When the subjective is they, the adjective is them. When the subjective is one, the adjective is one. If you are dealing with relative pronouns, when the subjective is who, the adjective is whom. When the subjective is that, the adjective is that. When the subjective is which, the adjective is which. When to use subjective case pronouns, Use the subjective case for the subject of a sentence. Example, she is falling asleep. Wrong, Nancy, Claire, and me are going to the ballet. Right, Nancy, Claire, and I are going to the ballet. Use the subjective case after a linking verb, like to be. Example, it is I. Use the subjective case in comparisons between the subject of the verbs that are not stated but understood. Example, Gary is taller than they are. When to use objective case pronouns, use the objective case for the object of a verb. Example, I called her. Use the objective case for the object of a preposition. Example, I laughed at him. Use the objective case after infinitives and gerunds. Example, asking him to go was a big mistake. Example, to give him the scare of his life, we all jumped out of his closet. Use the adjective case in comparisons between objects of verbs that are not stated but understood. Example, she calls you more than, she calls, me, this. There is a difference between who and whom. Another thing you ll need to know is when to use the relative pronoun, who, subjective case, and when to use the relative pronoun, whom, objective case, whom goes with him and them. The following method is very helpful when you read deciding which one is use. Example, Sylvester, who or whom, is afraid of the dark, sleeps with a Donald Duck nightlight on. Look only at the relative pronoun in its clause. Ignore the rest of the sentence. Who or whom, is afraid of the dark. Turn the clause into a question. Ask yourself, who or whom is afraid of the dark? Answer the question with an ordinary personal pronoun. He is. If you v answered the question with a subjective case pronoun, as you have here, you need the subjective case who in the relative clause. Sylvester, who is afraid of the dark, sleeps with a Donald Duck nightlight on. If you answer the question with an adjective case pronoun, you need the adjective case whom in the relative clause. Hint, try answering the question with he or him. Who goes with he, subjective case, and whom goes with him, objective case. Now on to sentence structure. A sentence is a group of words that can stand alone because it expresses a complete thought. To express a complete thought, it must contain a subject about which something is said and a verb which says something about the subject. Example, dogs bark. Example, the explorers slept in yak, hide tents. Example, looking out of the window, Dave saw a UFO. Every sentence consists of at least one clause. Many sentences contain more than one clause and phrases, too. A clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. Dogs bark, the explorers slept in a yak, hide tent, and Dave saw a UFO are all clauses. A phrase is a group of words that does not have both a subject and a verb. Looking out of window is a phrase. Sentence fragments. 
On standardized exams, some of those innocent-looking groups of words beginning with capital letters and ending with periods are only masquerading as sentences. In reality, they re-sentence fragments. A sentence fragment is a group of words that seems to be a sentence, but which is grammatically incomplete because it lacks a subject or a verb, or which is logically incomplete because other elements necessary for it to express a complete thought are missing. Examples Wrong, eggs and fresh vegetables on sale at the farmer's market. This is not a complete sentence because there is no verb to say something about the subject, eggs and fresh vegetables. Wrong, because Richard likes hippopotamuses. Even though this contains a subject, Richard, and a verb, likes, it is not a complete sentence because it doesn't express a complete thought. We don't know what is true because Richard likes hippopotamuses. Martha dreams about dinosaurs although. This isn't a complete sentence because it doesn't express a complete thought. What makes Martha s dreaming about dinosaurs in need of qualification or explanation? Run on sentences. Just as unacceptable as an incomplete sentence is a to complete sentence, a run on sentence. A run on sentence is actually two complete sentences stuck together, either with just a comma or with no punctuation at all. Wrong, the children had been playing in the park, they were covered with mud. Wrong, the children had been playing in the park, they were covered with mud. There are a number of ways to fix this kind of problem. They all involved a punctuation mark or a connecting word that can properly connect two clauses. Join the clauses with a semicolon. Right, the children had been playing in the park, they were covered with mud. Join the clauses with a coordinating conjunction, and, but, for, nor, or, so, yet, and a comma. Right, the children had been playing in the park, and they were covered with mud. Join the clauses with a subordinating conjunction, after, although, if, since, well, right, because the children had been playing in the park, they were covered with mud. Or right, the children were covered with mud, because they had been playing in the park. And, of course, the two halves of a run on sentence can be written as two separate, complete sentences. Right, the children had been playing in the park. They were covered with mud. Now on to verbs. You need to be familiar both with the way each tense is used and with the ways the tenses are used together. English has six tenses, and each has a simple form and a progressive form. In present tense, the simple form is, I work, while the progressive form is, I am working. In past tense, the simple form is, I worked, while the progressive form is, I was working. In future tense, the simple form is, I will work, while the progressive form is, I will be working. In present perfect tense, the simple form is, I have worked, while the progressive form is, I have been working. In past perfect tense, the simple form is, I had worked, while the progressive form is, I had been working. In future perfect tense, the simple form is, I will have worked, while the progressive form is, I will have been working. Using the present tense. Use the present tense to describe a state or action occurring in the present time. Example, I am a student. Example, they are studying the Holy Roman Empire. Use the present tense to describe habitual action. Example, they eat at Joe's dinner every night. Example, my father never drinks coffee. Use the present tense to describe things that are always true. Example, the earth is round. Example, grass is green. Using the past tense. Use the simple past tense to describe an event or state that took place at a specific time in the past and is now over and done with. Example, Norman broke his toe when he tripped over his son's tricycle. Using the future tense. Use the future tense for actions expected in the future. Example, I will call you on Wednesday. We often express future actions with the expression to be going to. Example, I am going to move to another apartment soon. Using the present perfect tense. Use the present perfect tense for actions and states that started in the past and continue up to an end of the present time. 
Example, I have been living here for the last two years. Use the present perfect for actions and states that happened a number of times in the past and may happen again in the future. Example, I have heard that song several my iPod. Use the present perfect for something that happened at an unspecified time in the past. Example, Anna has seen that movie already. Using the past perfect tense. The past perfect tense is used to represent past actions or states that were completed before other past actions or states. The more recent past event is expressed in the simple past, and the earlier past event is expressed in the past perfect. Example, when I turned my computer on this morning, I realized that I had quit the program yesterday without saving my work. Using the future present tense. Use the future perfect tense for a future state or event that will take place before another future event. Example, by the end of the week, I will have worked for hours of overtime. Using the proper past participle form. If you use the present, past, or future perfect tense, make sure that you use the past participle and not the simple past tense. Wrong, I have swam in that pool every day this week. Right, I have swum in that pool every day this week. Irregular verbs have two different forms for simple past and past participle tenses. The following are some of the most common irregular verbs. Irregular verbs. If the infinitive is arise, the simple past is arose and the past participle is arisen. If the infinitive is become, the simple past is became and the past participle is become. If the infinitive is begin, the simple past is began, and the past participle is begun. If the infinitive is blow, the simple past is blue, and the past participle is blown. If the infinitive is break, the simple past is broke, and the past participle is broken. If the infinitive is come, the simple past is came, and the past participle is come. If the infinitive is do, the simple past is did, and the past participle is done. If the infinitive is draw, the simple past is true, and the past participle is drawn. If the infinitive is drink, the simple past is drank, and the past participle is drunk. If the infinitive is drive, the simple past is drove, and the past participle is driven. If the infinitive is eat, the simple past is ate, and the past participle is eaten. If the infinitive is fall, the simple past is fell, and the past participle is fallen. If the infinitive is fly, the simple past is flew, and the past participle is flown. If the infinitive is freeze, the simple past is froze, and the past participle is frozen. If the infinitive is give, the simple past is gave, and the past participle is given. If the infinitive is grow, the simple past is grew, and the past participle is grown. If the infinitive is no, the simple past is new, and the past participle is known. If the infinitive is right, the simple past is road, and the past participle is written. If the infinitive is rise, the simple past is rose, and the past participle is risen. If the infinitive is run, the simple past is ran, and the past participle is run. If the infinitive is see, the simple past is saw, and the past participle is seen. If the infinitive is shake, the simple past is shook, and the past participle is shaken. If the infinitive is shrink, the simple past is shrank, and the past participle is shrunk. If the infinitive is sing, the simple past is sang, and the past participle is sung. If the infinitive is speak, the simple past is spoke, and the past participle is spoken. If the infinitive is take, the simple past is took, and the past participle is taken. If the infinitive is throw, the simple past is through, and the past participle is thrown. We are now on to adjectives and adverbs. On standardized exams, you may find an occasional item that is wrong because it uses an adjective where an adverb is called for or vice versa. An adjective modifies or describes a noun or pronoun. Example, a woman in a white dress ate a green apple. Example, the boat, leaky and dirty, hadn't even been used in years. An adverb modifies a verb an adjective, or another adverb. Most, but not all, adverbs end in L-Y. Don't you forget that some adjectives friendly, lovely also end in L-Y. Example, the interviewer looked approvingly at the neatly dressed applicant. 
Now on to parallel structure. On standardized exams, matching constructions must be expressed in parallel form. Make sure that when a sentence contains a list or makes a comparison, the items being listed or compared exhibit parallel structure. Items in a list. Wrong, I love skipping, jumping, and to platedly winks. Wrong, I love to skip, jump, and to platedly winks. Right, I love to skip, jump, and platedly winks. Also right, I love to skip, to jump, and to platedly winks. Also right, I love skipping, jumping, and playing tiddly winks. Items in a comparison. Comparisons must do more than just exhibit parallel structure. Most faulty comparisons relate to the notion that you can t-compare apples and oranges. You don't merely want comparisons to be grammatically similar, they must be logically similar as well. Examples Wrong, to visualize success is not the same as achieving it. Right, to visualize success is not the same as to achieve it. Also right, visualizing success is not the same as achieving it. Wrong, the rules of chess are more complex than checkers. Right, the rules of chess are more complex than those of checkers. Also right, chess is more complex than checkers. We are now on style review. Pronouns and reference. When we talk about pronouns and their antecedents, we say pronouns refer to, or refer back to their antecedents. We noted earlier that pronouns must agree in person in number with their antecedents. But a different kind of pronoun reference problem exists when a pronoun either doesn't be refer to any antecedent at all or doesn't be refer clearly to one, and only one, antecedent. Sometimes an incorrectly used pronoun has no antecedent. Poor, Joe does not like what they play on this radio station. Who are they? We can detail, because there is no antecedent for they. Right, Joe does not like what the disc jockeys play on this radio station. Don't use pronouns without antecedents when doing so makes a sentence unclear. Sometimes a pronoun seems to have an antecedent, until you look closely and see that the word that appears to be the antecedent is not a noun, but an adjective, a possessive form, or a verb. The antecedent of a pronoun must be a noun. Wrong, when you are painting. Make sure you don't get it on the floor. Right, when you are painting, make sure you don't get paint on the floor. Other examples of pronoun reference problems. Wrong, I have always been interested in astronomy and finally have decided to become one. Right, I have always been interested in astronomy and finally have decided to become an astronomer. Don't use pronouns with remote references. A pronoun that is too far away from what it refers to is said to have a remote antecedent. Wrong, Jane quit smoking, and as a result, temporarily put on a lot of weight. It was very bad for her health. Right, Jane quit smoking, because it was very bad for her health, and as a result, she temporarily gained a lot of weight. Don't use pronouns with faulty broad reference. A pronoun with broad reference is one that refers to a whole idea instead of a single noun. Wrong, he built a fence to stop people from looking into his backyard. That's not easy. Right, he built a fence to stop people from looking into his backyard. The fence was not easy to build. Redundancy. This type of style error is sometimes tested on the standardized exams. Words or phrases are redundant when they have basically the same meaning as something already stated in the sentence. Don't use two phrases when one is sufficient. Wrong, the school was established and founded in 1906. Right, the school was established in 1906. The Verbosity. Sometimes having extra words in a sentence results in a style problem. Conciseness is something that is valued on standardized exams. Wordy, the supply of musical instruments that are antique is limited, so they become more valuable each year. Better, the supply of antique musical instruments is limited, so they become more valuable each year. Wordy, 
we were in agreement with each other that Max was an unsuspecting old fool. Better, we agreed that Max was an unsuspecting old fool. Commonly misused words. Accept slash accept. Don T confused the two. To accept means to receive or agree to something, whereas accept is usually a preposition meaning excluding, although it can also mean to leave out. Wrong. Can you accept my apology? Right. Can you accept my apology? Effect slash effect. These are easy to confuse. To effect means to have an effect on something. When the word is being used as a verb, the proper word to use is almost always effect. When it is being used as a noun, the proper word to use is almost always effect. It should be noted that effect can also be a verb, meaning to bring about or cause to happen. Wrong, his affectations affected me to no good effect. Right, his affectations affected me to no good effect. Among slash between. In most cases, you should use between four two items and among four more than two. Example, the competition between Anne and Michael has grown more intense. Example, he is always at his best among strangers. But use common sense. Sometimes among is not appropriate. Example, plant the trees in the area between the road, the wall, and the fence. The amount slash number. Amount should be used to refer to an uncountable quantity. Number should refer to a countable quantity. Example, the amount of food he threw away would feed a substantial number of people. As slash like. Like is a preposition, it takes a noun object. As, when functioning, as a conjunction, introduces a subordinate clause. Remember, a clause is a part of a sentence containing a subject and verb. Example, he sings like an angel. Example, he sings, as an angel sings. As as the idiom is as as, not as than wrong, that suit is as expensive than this one. Right, that suit is as expensive as this one. Fewer slash less. Use fewer before a plural noun, use less before a singular one. Example, there are fewer apples on this tree than there were last year. Example, he makes less money than she does. Neither nor the correlative conjunction is neither, nor, not neither or example, he is neither strong nor flexible. Avoid the redundancy caused by using nor following a negative. Wrong, Alice's departure was not noticed by Debbie nor Sue. Right, Alice's departure was not noticed by Debbie or Sue. It's slash it s. Many people confuse it's and it s. It's is possessive. It s is a contraction of it is. Example, the cat licked its paws. Example, it s raining cats and dogs. There slash they re slash there. Many people confuse there, there, and they re. There is possessive. There is a contraction of they are. Example, the girls rode their bikes home. Example, they re training for the big race. There has two uses, it can indicate place, and it can be used as an expletive a word that doesn't do anything in a sentence except to lay the subject. Example, put the book over there. Example, there will be 15 runners competing for the prize. Commonly tested idioms. Some phrases are wrong simply because that is just not the way we say it in English. This is especially true of verb preposition word combinations. For instance, wrong, the fashion police frown at wearing hats adorned with flowers. Right, the fashion police frown upon wearing hats adorned with flowers. The first sentence is only wrong, because frown at is not the correct idiomatic expression. Either your ear will recognize the correct idiom, or at one t can you trust your ear on the following commonly tested idioms? Some commonly used idioms are, associate with, different from, Accuse of. Discriminate against. Apologize for. Distinguish from. Arrive at. Dream about slash of. Attribute to. Forbid to. Believe in. Frown upon. Believe to be. Object to. Continue to. Prohibit from. Contrast with.
substitute for credit with target at decide to use as define as view as